Welcome back to the Raleigh Oaks here on OTP 25. And you may notice that we have not actually simmed any games yet, and that is because I mentioned that I was going to do a rebrand of this team and actually make it, now that we're controlling the Raleigh Oaks, I want it to be something more than I just put together in three seconds in Photoshop. So we spent a bit of time doing some logos and jerseys here. Let's take a look at our team and what our minor league system is looking like here. So boom, there you have it. This is what the Raleigh Oaks are going to be looking like here. From this point on, we have cream home unis. We're keeping that look. It's a similar look still, but I just wanted to be better than something that I threw together in Photoshop in 30 seconds. So spent a little bit of time on this. Not the most detailed thing of all time, but you know, Raleigh Baseball Club, you got the Oaks across the baseball looks pretty decent in my mind for somebody who's not exactly a professional graphics designer. Threw it together in Photoshop, so we got that going there. And then just have a simple script O for the small team logo in maroon, and then on the U on the ball caps, it'll be uh, cream, so it pops more, obviously. Uh, so yeah, we have all that going. And then on the away unis, similar vibe, but it's gray, and then it says Raleigh across the chest. And then we have the Sunday alts. These are every Sunday home game. We'll be wearing these. Always wearing high socks. Similar thing, but it's pinstripes. It says Oaks across the front. And uh, you have the cool stirrups looks going there too. So those are our Sunday alts. And then we have also gone through and gave looks to all of our minor league teams here. So AAA. We are in the International League now. No longer have to worry about the PCL. And we are the Spartanburg Bulldogs. I just thought, you know, we wanted to keep it in Carolina, so why not do South Carolina, Spartanburg, which is where Wofford University is. And uh, they are the Terriers, so I was just like, yeah, hey, we're going to be the Bulldogs. So we're the Spartanburg Bulldogs there. Uh, I didn't bother with away unis for the minor league teams because we're never actually watching minor league games anyways, and all you ever see when you click on guys' pages is the home unis, so it doesn't really matter to me. But uh, we we could go in and easily do that if we wanted to, but I just didn't feel the need to. So home uni for the Spartanburg Bulldogs, there you have it. And then in double A, we have brought back the Trenton Thunder, New Jersey guy, obviously. Trenton Thunder just seemed like a no-brainer to me. They're back in the Eastern League. The Trenton Thunder are back. And then down in the Midwest League in High A, we are the Fond du Lac Dock Spiders. In real life, they are a college wooden bat summer league team. In this, they're going to be an affiliated ball team here in 2040 for the Raleigh Oaks. Or they've been they've been the affiliate for them this whole time. I just never actually imported their their logo or jersey or anything. But now that we're obviously controlling the Oaks, I care a bit more about the aesthetics. So the Fond du Lac Dock Spiders is our High A affiliate. And then we are the in the California League in A-Ball, and we are the, I believe this is the Bakerfield, yeah, the Baker the Bakersfield Streets is the Montreal uh, affiliate. We are the Honolulu Islanders. I didn't throw together a logo, but maybe I will at some point, but we did throw together some jerseys here. I thought it was a cool look. Very rainbow, Honolulu, Hawaii. It's, it's basically, I was just basically going for the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors throwbacks, if you've ever seen those and that they wear in different sports, the University of Hawaii. Uh, really good look, so I just wanted to duplicate that here in the game, or replicate that here in the game, rather. And then down in the Rookie Leagues, we are the Arizona Complex League in the American side. So the ACL Raleigh Saplings, we have a green top here. So we can easily differentiate. I even gave them a bit of a logo here. The Raleigh Saplings. Same thing as the Oaks, but it says Saplings across. And I'm also now realizing that I did not put a G in the logo, so it says Saplins. Like it's uh, like it's a slang, but it's whatever. They're the Saplins. Uh, <laughs> and then in the DSL, we... Or the D... Yeah, the DSL, we are the... Acorns. So the Raleigh Acorns, the Raleigh Saplings, they are red up top for the uh, the Acorns. Just something to differentiate between the two teams. And uh, that's what we're rocking with here throughout the system. And then I also just figured, you know, it's the first season of the Raleigh Oaks here. These first part of the season episodes are usually pretty short anyways because it doesn't take too much time for me to go through how our team has been doing and then go through the draft. But since this is the first ever season that we are doing the Raleigh Oaks here. I just figured we might as well watch 
what's going on here in the first game of the Raleigh Oaks. So here we are on the road in Miami, the first game for Robert Pollard as the GM of the Raleigh Oaks here. I figured we would hop into it, see how it goes. And uh, let's just hop into it here. Pete Fullerton on the bump for the Miami Marlins, a team that we're going to be seeing a lot of now that we are in their division. Uh, and we have Edgar Ortega leading things off here for Raleigh. Let's just see how the first AB in Raleigh, or for our tenure in Raleigh, goes here. Is Ortega single up the middle, leads off the 2040 season with a base knock. Edgar Ortega, somebody we are hoping is going to be a big, big piece of this team here moving forward. Now it's Luis Griego, another one of our young players at the dish. Let's just try to steal second. Go ahead. And he goes and swipes second. We're not going to micromanage everything here in the first uh, game of the season, but I just wanted to, you know, get a guy in second base there. Boom. And then uh, let's just half inning this. They don't score anybody. All right, so they strand a runner on second with nobody out. Now we're here bottom one. Wilson Morales, who is our 24-year-old hopeful ace here for the Oaks, taking on this Marlins lineup. He goes scoreless frame. So top two here, scoreless frame. They get a man on second base with two outs. Morales, 3-1 cap. Walks the man. So it's set first and second here, two outs for Joe St. Pierre. 2-0 cap to him. Fly ball center field. That will be caught for out number three. By Griego, the center fielder. Move things on top three. Nothing going. Bottom three. Nothing going. Top four. Nothing going. Bottom four. All right. In a bit of a trouble. Bit of trouble here is Wilson Morales. It's first and second. Nobody out for Kevin Roberts Jr. Uh, let's just pitch to him. Two two count. Boom. Gets the check swing. Uh, punch out. So one down. Now it's Mike Ray. One two count to him. Pop fly, center field. Griego comes on. He'll put that one away. Two down. They do not tag up from second base. Brings up Pero Fr Fruga? Frua? Fruga? I don't even know how you pronounce this, but he's their catcher. 3 0 count. He spits on that. And now Morales has bases juiced. Do we take him out here? It's, it's very early season. He's at 82 pitches. What does he usually... Th he usually throws around like 87. He's in a bit of a jam here, so I think we might bring in somebody out of the pen. Joe St. Pierre. He can't really hit against lefties, so we are going to bring in... Cornejo, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Cornejo is going to come in, and we're going to see if he can get out of this inning. 2-2 two -two count. Here it comes. Gets him, strands the bases loaded. It's still nil-nil. Nil-nil, I'm in soccer mode. Playing football manager. That's what we do over here nowadays, apparently. Uh, top five. Nesty Rojas leading things off. And he didn't get on, but Esprit, the shortstop, is on second base here with one out. And then Jaden Foskey's at the dish. Just swing away, 1-0 count. Slices one left field. That'll be caught on a line by Trevino. Runner holds up at second base. So two down. Runner on second for Ortega. 1-0 count. He shoots one out the right field, but that will be caught for at number three. So still nothing, nothing here. Bottom five. Uh, we'll see if Cornejo can get through these guys. He cannot. So it's first and third here. Two outs, and it's a right-handed batter up. So I think we are going to take Cornejo out of the game, and we are going to bring in Nazario, maybe? I mean, it doesn't really matter. Maybe Havens. Ah, fuck it. We'll bring in Nazario. He's going to come in the game here. And he's going to pitch. 1-0 count. Not a great count to be in here. But it is only a pop fly to center field. Griego will put that one away easily. And it's still scoreless here in Miami. Move things on top six. Nothing going. Now Nazario, we're going to let him get through this. Scoreless frame for him. It's top seven. 
Boom. Nesty Rojas on third base here with one out for Duvall Esprit. We are going to try to safety squeeze. Even with the infield in, I just realized that. Uh, yeah, so that's 1-0. Take another pitch, see what happens. 2-0, swing away. SB ground ball, the runner going to the plate. Bang, bang, play. He's out at the plate. Rojas could not slide in safely. He's gunned down. So, uh... Oh, wait. Did it not just say he was out? Did we score at some point other in this inning? Am I... Am I, like, out of the loop here? Okay, so that's how he got on third base. All right, I see what happened now. Rojas doubled, Duhan scored, and then Rojas moved up the third on the throw. Uh, as the trailing runner, safe at third, so then he was not able to score. But we do have a one nothing lead, so we do have that going for us. See if we can score, or Esprit swipes second here, possibly. We'll try it again. 2-0 count, all right, just swing away now. 3-0 count to Foskey. As the nine hitter spits on that, the catcher. So it's first and second here. Two outs for Edgar Ortega, the leadoff hitter. We're just swinging away. New pitcher is Ronnie McKinney. 2-2 two -two count. Blows it right by Ortega. But the Oaks do lead 1-0 as we move things on. Bottom seven. Nazario still got some juice. And he gets a score this frame. Top eight. Nothing going. Bottom eight. We bring in... Uh... Either Mendoza or Partin. Or Parton. Uh, those are our stoppers. Also, no, no, he's a middle relief stopper. He's a stopper. Okay, so I think we're going to go Havens or Parton. No, he's secondary. What am I saying? I, I, I'm like relearning all these bullpen guys because I it's been a bit since I recorded this and also it's just an entirely new team that we're not familiar with. This isn't the Angels anymore. But yeah, we're going to go with the stopper here. We are going to go with Havens. Did not mean to click on that. Havens, please, come in the game. Boom. So we're going to see if we can get a two-inning save from Havens here. As he works to score this frame, it's top nine. Can we get anything going? All right, Duhan's on second, 1-1 one, one count to Nesty Rojas. And they walked him. They said, just take your base. So it's first and second here with one out for Duvall Esprit, who we might pinch hit for. Even though he does have a hit today, he's not the worst hitter. But we do have some... He's not a hitter. Price could come in and play shortstop when we want to pinch hit here. But I'm thinking... Maybe not figure. Maybe Figueroa. Maybe Figueroa is who we... I mean, they're like the same. 50 contact, 55 power. Everything else is 50s. And then Figueroa. Okay. Yeah, no, we're going to bring in Figueroa. Figueroa is going to come into pinch hit. First and second, one out. 1-2 count. Ground ball left side, and he grounds into a around-the-horn double play. 5-4-3. And that'll end the inning. So now we have to bring in a new shortstop, which will be uh, Price, because I don't think... Yeah, Ortega's a 55 at short. So yeah, it's going to be Eric Price, who comes into the game and plays shortstop for us. Can Dave Havens close things out here for the one for the two inning save? Not immediately. So runner on second is Kevin Roberts. Nobody out. Mike Ray at the dish. One one count. Lazy pop fly center field. Griego comes on, puts that one away. Runner stays at second. Now it's the guy who I don't know how to pronounce. First pitch swinging. Ground ball left side. That gets past Hartley at third. And the Marlins have tied the game here in the bottom of the ninth with an RBI double off the bat of the man who I don't know how to pronounce. Fruga, some shit like that. So 1-1 one, one as Havens blows it. Uh, I mean, he's still got a little bit of juice here. Can he possibly... Doesn't he have like, have like decent... He has 50 control. We'll pitch around this guy, see what happens. 2-2 two, two count. 
Ground ball right side. That'll be two down. So there you go. Two down, runner on third, and it is now their nine hitter at the dish. Uh, let's go after him. One, two, count. And Haskins strikes him, or Havens strikes him out. Uh, but he does blow the save. So we move things on to extra innings. It's top ten here. Our nine hitters leading things off. What is happening? Okay, so there's a man on... Okay, what am I saying? There's a runner on second because I'm usually... I'm usually not doing these in the regular season, so I'm not used to the ghost runner being there. So I hit until uh, runners in scoring position. And not realizing there was already somebody there because there are there's not the ghost runner in the playoffs, obviously. So yeah, Price on second still after the pop-up from Foskey. Ortega, they're walking him. They're afraid of Ortega, but now we got Griego who's not a slouch himself. But he takes that first strike, swings the next pitch, and he skies it in the shallow outfield. Two down, runners stay put. Now it's our three-hitter in Jared Hartley. 1-0 count to him. Ground ball left side, fielded cleanly, and that will be at number three. Move things on, bottom ten. We might be able to squeeze a couple more batters out of ha Havens here. But I think we might just go somebody else. So I'm thinking Parton might be our guy. Either It's either Parton or uh, Elder is really what I'm thinking. We'll see if we can squeeze a couple batters. I mean, he's only in the yellow, so we'll just go after this guy. 2-1 count. Not great. Takes that for 3-1. Lays down the bunt. They get the runner over. Did they just get him? Oh my god! Havens! This is what I'm talking about. The football manager, you just be able to see that boom it happens, obvious, at a third base. And this, you have to watch it happen and then wait for the text to scroll by. And then it's like, okay, it's, even then, it's still not really obvious. So, <laughs> could be cool if the, uh, the, the in-game gameplay was much better. I also thought it was funny that somebody commented on the video where I mentioned that, and they were like, Everybody who plays football manager thinks that the gameplay sucks and wants it to be better. It's like, that's that's the type of bar we're talking about here. Everybody who plays that game thinks it's bad. I'm playing that game, and I'm like, this is fantastic. But anyways, back to the game here. Bottom 10, Trevino on first base after the incredible play by Havens. Uh, I think... I mean, it's the top of the... We're going to... He's... We'll him face one more guy. See if he can get a double play. 2-2 two -two count. Blows it by him. He's in the red now. We'll let him face Spiteri. Or no, this is this is the MVP guy. This is the guy who's just like a monster. I mean, Havens is feeling it. We believe. We believe in Havens. First pitch swinging. No throw down to second base. Yeah, he's in the red. Let, just go after him. 0-2. Spiteri. Whiffs through it, and Havens gets through the inning. Move things on to the 11th. So we have Juan Ramirez, our cleanup hitter at the dish. Just swing away. They're walking him. So first and second here, nobody out for Devon Leas. I, I, I might be interested in trying to bunt, but he is he's the fifth hitter. We believe. We're not about bunting. 2-1 count. And he just pops one up, foul side, or foul third base side, rather. One down. So now it's Duhan. 1-0 count to him. High fly ball left field, but it will die out well before the track. So two down, brings up Nesty Rojas. 2-0 count to him. Shoots one out the left center field, but that will be caught by the center fielder for at number three, we move things on to the 11th. Havens will indeed be getting taken out of the game now. It's righty, righty, lefty, but it's mainly a righty order. So I think we're going to go Parton. Yes. Parton's going to come in the game. And we are going to just, or no, we're, we're going to pitch to him because there's runner on second. We're at the seat anyways, unless we half inning it, which I don't want to do. Gets a fly ball to right field, and the runner stays at second base. So one down. Next batter up is Kevin Roberts. Whips through it on the fastball. Two down. Brings up Mike Ray. 
2-1 count to him. Skies it into the infield. Foskey is called off by the third baseman, Hartley. And we move things on to the 12th inning. We've got ourselves a thriller here in the first game of the 2040 season. It's top 12. Rojas on first base. Eric Price, one of the longest tenured Raleigh Oaks here in the batter's box. We'll take that first pitch. It's in there for a strike. We should probably just bunt, to be honest. He gets it down, and he gets the sack to... Oh, and they can't get him at first base. It's an error as the throw is off target. Pitchers are not athletes. Do not let them tell you otherwise. I don't actually believe that, but we're just, you know, we're going with a bit here. Uh, <laughs> so runners on the corners. Nobody out. Jaden Foskey. I don't know if I want him to hit here, but it's... I mean, Carranza, we have him on the team because I think he's a decent bat. So it's like a 50s and everything, and then 55 and gap and power. Whereas Foskey... Okay. I mean, they're similar hitters. He's a lefty. Carranza's a righty. We'll just let him, we'll just let him hit. So Foskey here. Runners on the corners. Takes that. Just keep taking until you get a strike. All right. Swing away. 2-2. Two, two. Watches it for strike three. He goes down looking. So now it's top of the order. They're bringing in Mar Marquise Redis, another right-handed pitcher, facing Edgar Ortega, who is obviously somebody we want to be the future of this team. Just swing away. Works a full count. Fly ball center field. Oh my god, I thought, that guy, I thought my game just crashed there. Uh, do you want to tag up Rojas from third base, try to score? I think we might, I think we might want to. Yes. It didn't even show what happened, he just, he just scores? Alright. So uh, he scored on the tag up, but it didn't actually show me what happened. So, 2-1, Nesty Rojas scores on the sack fly from Edgar Ortega. Now it's Griego up. Works a full count. Spits on ball four. It's first and second here. Two outs for Jared Hartley. 0-1 count to him. Ground ball right side. That gets through. They do send the runner. The throw to the plate is not in time as Price slides in safely. And the Oaks tack on two this inning. It's 3-1. They take their first lead of the game since the seventh inning. So it's top tw or still top 12 here, obviously. Two outs, runners on second and third. Juan Ramirez, they're walking him. Bringing up another one of our hopeful prospect boppers here. Devon Leas. One-two count to him. Whiffs through it, look completely non-competitive. But we do tack on two in the inning. It's now bottom 12. And we have Josh Parton in to, cl to close things out. So 0-1 count. Ground ball, that's up the middle. That might score a run. Rounding third, he's holding up. So they hold him up. Runners on the corners here. Nobody out for Joe St. Pierre. Uh, let's just pitch to him. One, two, count. Pop fly. Shallow outfield grass. Or no, looks like it's right on the infield. As that'll be caught by Ortega. One down. So now a ground ball could end this game. This is their nine hitter. He's a slap hitter. We're going to pitch to contact. One, two count. And he slaps one into right field, and that'll score a run. Three, two. One run ball game. Trevino's up. Two, one count to him. That'll bloop over the head of the third baseman, Hartley. Ramirez fields. Trevino does not tie the game because they hold up this really slow runner at, sec at third base. We we need a, a double play. We just we need it. Two two, infield in blows it by or not blows it by him sneaks the change up by him. Two two count or two outs. But now it's now it's this guy. It's Jaquat Spateri, the man who has won multiple MVPs. 
Uh, yes, two MVPs, four Silver Sluggers, three-time Playoff Series MVP, two-time championship winner, four-time All-Star. This guy is an absolute stud. Can Josh Parton get him out? Power v. Power. Bases loaded. First pitch swing and taken at the center field, and that lands in. Oh, my God. Jaquat Spiteri says, Welcome to the National League Southern Division. And they're dropping confetti. They're dropping confetti for an opening day walk-off loss. Is that what that, or is that fireworks? What was that? <laughs> what, are, what are they doing here in Miami? We lose 4-3 after an action-packed 12th inning. All right, folks, we're here at June 1st, and things have gotten off to a mixed bag, I would say. We have an incredible offense so far, but we do not have any pitching whatsoever. As a matter of fact, we are the worst goddamn pitching team in the league. 15th ERA total, 16th starters. We got a decent bullpen, but, you know, that's because I know how to put together at least a decent bullpen from scraps. Runs allowed the worst in the National League. War the worst in the National League. Horrible at giving up home runs. That's been a huge issue from our bullpen. Uh, we're striking out a decent amount of guys, and then the defense has not been spectacular this year. But hopefully that can improve as we go on. But uh, we'll, we'll get into a bet. We'll get into that a little bit here. But you can see here the offense. We're scoring the second most runs in the National League here. Got off to a really dreadful start in April. Things looked bleak in April. But as you can see here in May, 15 and 14, looking like a scrappy bunch here, performing. I feel like we're kind of like the A's in real life. You know, they can bang. The A's, they come, they swing the lumber. They know how to hit. They know how to pitch, but they can hit. And if we go ahead and take a look at this current roster setup with our bats, things have changed a bit. But one thing that has been very, very good is Nesty Rojas here. 25-year-old outfielder. He had his rookie year for them last year, put up a 2.6 war. He has already passed that in less games and less plate appearances here in 2040. 169 WRC+, plus, 13 doubles, 8, 8 home runs, 35 ribbies, 38 runs already. He's walking 14% of the time, striking out 16.4. He has a 430 on-base percentage, hitting in the two-hole for us. I mean, he's just been fantastic. And then Edgar Ortega, he's been great as well. He's leading off for us still. He's got a two war, a 125 WRC+, plus, 17 doubles, 38 runs for him as well. He's walking a ton, striking out a bit more than Rojas, but definitely not a high strikeout percentage either. 382 OBP. Him and Rojas have been incredible in that 1-2 spot at the top of the order. And then Luis Griego. He got off to a slow start with the rest of the team. If we take a look at his splits here, his April, not the best, but then here in May, he's been on fire. I believe we actually got an email recently. Yes, the star player in the month. Oh, no, this was actually a week. Just a weekly award for him here. He did not win the uh, player of the month, but you can see Griego has been fantastic here for us. 111 WRC+. Plus. He's gotten that up since he's been on fire here in May. Seven doubles, 10 home runs. That leads the team. He's our center fielder as well. He's playing a decent center field, but he's definitely not like an elite guy at that position. We should definitely not be looking to play him long-term in center. He should be a left or right fielder, for, probably left with this arm. But... Uh, his bat is just too good. We're, we're basically just going all out bat right now because we just don't really have a center fielder who I trust to play every day and be like a legit player for us. Uh, and we're trying to get as many of these bats as we can into the lineup because we just have a log jam of like young guys we want to get playing time. But as we move things on a little bit more, Chris Risher is up from AAA. We picked him up in the offseason with a trade with Seattle. Big contact hitter, doesn't really have much uh, power to his name, but he's hitting pretty well here since coming up from AAA, and we're playing him in left field right now. We'll see if that continues. Uh, Juan Ramirez was playing left field, but as you can see from his ZR here, he was absolutely dreadful in left field. He cannot play there. So Tonka or Tonko here, not going to be playing left field for us anymore. He's a first baseman. Uh, so he's playing there, hitting a bit better since he moved there. He was hitting quite poorly when he was playing left field, but now he's focusing on just playing first base and hitting 
And he's got eight home runs and eight doubles. So we'll take that with a very, very low striker percentage as well. We will absolutely take that from Juan Ramirez. Uh, Aiden McCarthy just recently called up. He has been on fire since it came up, 173 WRC+. Plus. He's our catcher right now. We don't really have uh, a great catcher situation because Foskey, if you look here, he was absolutely dreadful. I keep saying dreadful and fantastic. Uh, 46 WRC+. Plus. That's just not going to cut it, as well as just not really being a good catcher defensively either. So Foskey's the backup now. Aiden McCarthy, 23-year-old, almost 24-year-old, who they picked up in a trade from Pittsburgh in 2038. The previous GM, incredible arm on this guy, good leader, intelligence, has a decent bat as well. He's been hitting, and uh, he's hitting the minor leagues as well, so we can see, well, hopefully this, this continues for him. But then just taking a look at some of the guys who have played a, a, a ton for us. Chris Duhon in that DH spot because he just can't really play anywhere at the moment. Uh, and obviously we can't play him at first because that's what Ramirez is. So Duhon is DHing. He has an 85 WRC+, plus, 8 home runs, 6 doubles. You know, his peripherals aren't the worst. I would like to see him improve a bit. You know, we think this bat is very good. He's just, you know, he's getting off to a slow start here, making that jump from high A to the big leagues. But he's absolutely a guy who we think is a part of our future here. Obviously, as a first baseman DH type, but, you know, this bat, it, it plays. He's also wearing 86. Let's go Devils. Jack Hughes is winning the goddamn heart. Deval Esprey was our starting shortstop for a bit. He is like an okay defensively shortstop. He has a decent bat, but he just wasn't hitting. And we ended up calling up Mike Rubin, who was down in double A, just tearing things up. You can see here he's played 21 games. He's been absolutely awful at the plate with a 36 WRC+. Plus, but he should be a bit better defensively at hit. He is. He is definitely better defensively at shortstop. This bat, I think, will come around. I don't think this guy is going to be a 36 WRC plus hitter. We just need to give him time. It's a very small sample size. We're not trying to win this first season anyways. It's all about getting these guys acclimated and finding who we think can play in certain spots. Devon Leas was terrible in that first base spot while, while Ramirez was playing left and he was playing first. Just, I mean, you can't be doing this. Uh, and the thing is, we probably should just send him down to AAA or AA and just let him rake down there and get his development up because he's not playing a lot, but I don't want to burn one of these options. But I think we just might... I think we're going to do that. Uh, we'll look into that probably after the draft. But Leas, I don't think, is going to be on the big league team here because we just want him to be playing every day, getting this development up, getting these ratings up as much as he can, tapping into the 60 potential because we don't want to stall his development out while just sitting on the bench. Figueroa has not really been doing anything on the bench, but he, he might get some more time once Leas gets sent down. Uh, we also have, uh, Yakel Cooperman got hurt for a while. He just recently came back. He was on a rehab assignment down at AAA Spartanburg, but he's back now as our backup center fielder. He might be a guy I look to possibly start in center just to get some better defense, but I don't know. Who knows? We'll have to see. And then Eric Oliar, Ola, Olar, Oliar, however you say this guy's name, 23-year-old, uh, out of Fitchburg State University, former fourth round pick in 2038. Durable as well. He is a solid infielder, second, third, can play some spot, some shortstop as well. He was down in double A, tearing things up with a 2.4 war and a 173 WRC plus. And you may notice that we actually have Jared Hartley not on the team right now. He was decent start to the season, triple digit WRC plus, not gonna complain about that. But as you can see here, he strained his groin. So he is not gonna be with us here for the next four weeks. And that is why this guy was called up, because he's just the best option available for us to play that position. So we called him up, and we're going to see what this guy can do. Just another young player on this team that we're hoping can do big things for us. And then before we actually look at the pitching side of things, I should mention that right now, Dave Havens is currently in AAA on a rehab assignment. He's had one appearance down there. He'll be back soon enough. Uh, and then Juan Nazario is out for four more days. He's been out for a while with acute elbow soreness. Hopefully he could... No, he's... No, never mind. That's an IL time. He, he's out for a while. He's out for, for multiple weeks here. Juan Nazario. He had a really good ERA. Really good ERA. Bit unlucky with the FIP. Was striking out a ton of guys. Given up way too many home runs. But he was definitely promising among our bullpen guys. So we're definitely going to be missing him here down the stretch. And as far as what the rest of our bullpen here looks like... If we sort by innings pitched, we have Wilson Moreno. We'll sort by war. 
that's not even... We'll sort by innings pitched. So Wilson Morales has pitched the most innings for us. 59 and two-thirds has the highest war. One war. He's basically been the only starter who's serviceable at all. The rest of these guys, god-awful. Jeremy Osborne has not returned to his good starter form. Yuri Perez is falling off a cliff. I mean, he's not even that that bad, but I don't know. Maybe it's the defense behind him. I mean, who knows? It's not like he has the FIP going, though. He's given up way too many home runs. I don't really know why we're giving up so many home runs because our our, our ballpark is not like super like uh, super fly ball heavy or super home run heavy. But we have a ton of guys giving up home runs. So Perez is pitching poorly. Lozano's pitching poorly. Machado's pitching poorly. I wish it, Lozano's getting unlucky. He's somebody who could benefit from from better defense because he's actually not pitching that bad. Decent K minus walk for a starter. He has not been bad. I should say that he, him and Morales have been the guys who, who are like serviceable starters for us right now. The rest of them, they suck. And then in the bullpen, we're rocking. Montiel is back as the closer. He's got 11 and two thirds since he came back. He's been whatever, giving up too many home runs. I don't know what the deal with that is, but all our guys giving up way too many home runs. Uh, Mendoza and Eater are now the setup, the double barrel setup men because we don't have a stopper because we just don't have the personnel to be using that right now. So Mendoza, he's been really good as a lefty at the pen for us. Good ERA, good fit minus. He's uh, striking out a bunch of guys, not walking at anybody, not giving up home runs. You know, love to see it. Josh Parton, he struggled. This Darnell Pettis guy, Pettis is somebody we claimed off waivers from San Diego in April just because he had decent stuff, and I was like, who knows? And uh, he was just kind of in trip. He was in the waivers forever, if you look at here. He's one of these guys that the AI just constantly waves and picks up, waves, picks up, waves, picks up, waves, picks up. I mean, you just it's claimed off waivers, claimed off waivers, claimed off waivers. Something that the AI loves to do in this game is do stuff like this. So Darnell Petty's is somebody who has just been constantly uh, constantly on waivers. So I, I was like, he looks like somebody who's decent. We're going to give him a shot here. 23 and two-thirds innings. He has no options, and what do you know? We're probably looking at waving this guy, to be completely honest with you. Uh, but, you know, we give him a shot. Uh, Cornejo has been like, meh. The FIP has not been great, though. He's also giving up a ton of home runs. Kalena Jackson, he was on the Braves team that we beat in the World Series last year. You can see here he signed, or he was claimed off waivers by Arizona while with Atlanta after he finished second in the reliever of the year voting. They waived him, and then uh, the D-backs DFA'd him, and then we claimed him. So he is somebody who has an option year left because we've already, we've already used that and sent him down. He's up in Raleigh right now. He's another guy who's getting a bit unlucky with the with the ERA and the FIP there. Not giving up a home, ton of home runs, so love to see that. He's been somebody who's been serviceable. Wilson Montiel, like I said, just recently came back. And then Josh Elder is somebody who was on IL for us for a while. He was on there with elbow tendonitis. He's back now, and he has been phenomenal in his... Uh, Nine and a third innings pitched here. A triple digit 999 ERA plus here for the big league club. Hopefully that can continue because he is in a setup role with Mendoza. And right now we're rocking only seven relievers because we're rocking one extra guy in the uh, lineups because I just felt like that was the, the best thing to be doing right now because we wanted to squeeze in uh, Cooperman. We wanted to squeeze in Cooperman once he came off the IL because we didn't really have a backup center fielder at the moment. Uh, so we brought him back up, but we might be going back to another reliever once we send down Leas because that just makes sense to me. I should also mention we claimed two more guys off waivers as well. Both of them are currently in AAA because they had options. J uh, Gordy McEldowney was claimed off waivers from Cl uh, Cleveland. He went to William & Mary. He's a right-handed pitcher. Does not know where the hell it's going. 35 control, but he has some really solid uh, ratings, I feel like. You know, he, he he had options, or I guess we've used his last option now, but he had one option year left before we uh, sent him down. I don't think we're going to be paying him $3 million next year, but he was somebody I was like, let's just give him a shot, see if he's decent for us. And he was okay in like his nine innings that he had in the big leagues, but he's back down in Spartanburg now. 
uh, just as like a depth guy for us. And then the other guy we picked up is Juan Jaimes. I'm assuming is how you pronounce this guy's name. Juan Jaimes. Jaimes. Something like that. Lefty. He is currently in Spartanburg as well. He has not pitched yet in the big leagues for us. But uh, he is somebody who has next year's options still. Uh, as we've used this year's. Because he had two when we picked him up. So uh, Juan Jaimes is somebody who I just thought was interesting to claim off waivers, and we might be seeing him in the big leagues here at some point. I should also mention that we did indeed waive and DFA Eric Price because the, this longest tenured guy, he's just awful. He has these decent ratings, but he just does not play a good infield anywhere. Uh, he's not a hitter. He can't play a good infield. He's just not good. The guy has been bad for multiple seasons now. I don't know why they ever paid this guy the amount of money they were paying. I guess because of this year, 2035, where he just had this fluke year. And then they were paying him like $8 million for the next two seasons. So we just cut him. We just said, we just we just bit the bullet on him and we paid like $12.8 million or something like that. Uh, just paid it right away. So now I guess Oakland picked him up, but... I'm not really sweating losing this guy. He's whatever. And in case you're wondering if maybe our luck with pitching prospects might be different now that we're no longer in Anaheim, no, it's the same. Juan Trujillo here, partially torn labrum, number 48 prospect in baseball. Just, he's just, he's just cooked. He's, he's fragile. He's got a partially torn labrum. Who knows? Maybe he rebounds, but for now, he's on the I.L. Oh, I also wanted to mention Alfredo Medina here. He is a switch-hitting corner outfielder. Incredible arm. This is absolutely somebody we want up in the big leagues here soon. He just doesn't have a spot right now in the big leagues, uh, so we might call him up here at some point. But Alfredo Medina, he's currently in AAA, absolutely tearing the cover off the ball. Two war, 153 WRC+, plus, 19 doubles, 11 home runs. He's got a four-digit OPS. He's just... Been incredible in AAA. Big power eye with some decent contact and gap power to go with it. He is somebody, like I said, we are trying to get to the big leagues here at some point, but right now he's just raking in AAA. And now it is time for the first year player draft. We have the number nine overall pick. It is Nats, Reds, Padres, White Sox, Yankees, Giants, Rays, Mets, and then us. We were seventh, dropped down the ninth. The Rays got more screwed than we did. The Padres got screwed at a first as well. The Reds jumped all the way up from 8 to 2. And then, of course, our former team, the Los Angeles Angels, are picking last because they won the World Series in 2039. So here we are in the 2040 first-year player draft. Number one overall to the Washington Nationals is going to be Devon Nineheads Pinkins. He is a corner outfielder. Serious pop high schooler. He'll be uh, developing for quite a while, but who knows? Maybe he makes a, maybe maybe he makes an impact at some point. We will now move things on to our pick, number nine overall, and there still are some eighty potentials here, but they are high schoolers. Our scout thinks we should take Vince Yates, who does look quite good, durable. We love that. Don't love this. Commit to a different school. We have to save him from going there, honestly. But uh, Vince Yates looks pretty insane. 70 speed with this gap power, 75 potential. I mean, the bat looks insane. Looks like he's going to be more so a really good corner than he is a center, especially with this arm and only 65 range. Some decent personality traits here as well. Uh, Pat Buchanan, definitely like Yates more. Beasley... I think I like Yates more simply because Yates can play a really good corner outfield, and this guy's not even good in the corner, even though, like, this guy's bat seems incredible. Uh, and then Tim Aldridge. Uh, I mean, between... So Yates... Aldris has better contact, Yates has better gap, better power, he has better eye, he has better avoid K. So, I mean, they're pretty similar bats, but, like, similar, like, they have equal, like, good things. I mean, both of these guys are really good, but then in the field, yeah, in the field, it's definitely Yates gets the edge. 
So I think we're definitely leaning Yates. Who are the college guys? And yeah, college guys dropped down to 65 here. But I mean, like, this guy... He's not a center fielder, though. If this guy was an actual center fielder, I might look into doing that. This guy's not a center fielder either. Uh, and then... This guy's not a center fielder either. And then if we take a look at starters... It's like a high school starter. This is a college starter who I don't think we're going to take ninth overall. So yeah, I think we're just going to go with what our scout wants, and that is Vince Yates, the 6'4 high schooler out of uh, Camden in South Carolina. Durable already as well. So yeah, Vince Yates is our guy. We are going to meet his demand and move things on to our next pick here. So second round... And we've got high schooler, also durable. Another corner outfielder. First baseman with some pop. Uh, I'm just seeing a bunch of 18s here. College drops down to 55. This is a starter. Not somebody I want to take here, though. I don't really think he's that great. Incredible name, Amari Cheeseboro. But he's a corner. Are there even any, like, there's a shortstop here. Horrible personality, all glove, not really ever going to be a good bat. Uh, this guy's even worse of a bat. And then in center field, you have this guy who's huge swing and miss, but I'm not taking this guy second round. And then for college starters, it's Phil Payne, who I don't think is good. This BABIP is really, really something that, that makes me hesitate. Mike Leonard doesn't look impressive either. And Jake Morris also doesn't really look impressive. He can hit a little bit too, but I don't really think that bad is anything to actually get excited about. I mean, the thing is, Neely is all or nothing. He's all power if this develops. So if, like, this only develops to, like, 60 or 55, he's suddenly just, like, an average bat. But Culpepper has the really good BABIP contact bat with some good power and then average eye as well. I mean, the scout wants us to take Neely. Culpepper is recommended slot. Neely's a little bit more than slot. Uh, work ethic. I mean, it's really like a toss-up here. Uh, we're going to take Culpepper. Kevin Culpepper's our guy. We're taking him. We're moving things on to round three. And our scout thinks we should take Alpha Habersham. Starter. Doesn't really pop off the page to me. He's got good control, potential, home run potential. The BABIP is not something I'm, I'm, I'm in love with. This curveball is awful. None of these pitches are anything too great, but he does have the high control. But the movement's not great. It's the home run ability is, or the home run suppression is. So, yeah, I'm not really in love with that guy. This, I mean, I prefer this guy, but he's impossible. Impossible signee, but... We do have a lot of money that we could offer a guy. So I think this guy is really good. So we could potentially offer him or draft him and then offer him like a like a shit ton and see if he accepts it. This guy's got a great name, Giovanni Fittipaldi. Definitely more of a corner. Interesting bat, durable, injury proneness. We love that. Do we have any of the... Yeah, so the 70 range shortstop who's a 50 grade is not there anymore. And then we have this guy who I'm not going to take here. So yeah, Bennett is probably who I'm leaning towards. This catcher is interesting. I mean, the catcher, honestly, is more than interesting. He seems like he could be really good. Is this the same school that... Culpepper was committed to or somebody that we were looking at I don't know I swear I could have seen that this guy's an all bat but I mean, this guy's got a really good bat profile and 65 blocking and 65 framing high adaptability free tag might be might be too hard to pass up here so I think we're going to take free tag unless there's somebody down here who stands out all these guys are high this guy's a oh this is cheeseboro uh yeah no we're going to take Free tag here. And then Spencer Bennett's still here. Our scat thinks we should take this 45 potential guy. 
who I'm not going to do. I'm going to take Spencer Bennett. We're taking Spencer Bennett. We're going to draft him, and then we're going to see what we can offer him at the end of the draft. We move things on. Cheeseboro's here. No, we're taking this guy. Yeah. I mean, 80 speed, 70 gap, 80 avoid K. The BABIP's not great. He's a slap hitter, but he's got 80 speed as a slap hitter. But he does, He can't play anywhere defensively. I mean, you, you've got to be a better defender if you're going to be this type of hitter profile. You've got to be a better defender. This guy's interesting. Another catcher. Really good personality. Class, but he can't catch. He can't catch. Really weird profile where all of his potential is in avoid K and power. He's also impossible. So, yeah, I don't think we're getting that guy. This guy's got an interesting gap in power, but his avoid K sucks. Uh, Joe Brown, same sort of thing. So that 45 potential uh, 70 range outfielder who wasn't this guy is taken. This guy is interesting. I mean, it's round five. I'd prefer to take somebody like Cheeseboro here, but I mean, we need gloves in the organization. And as much as I'm not somebody who drafts for need in baseball... I do think that drafting for need here could be a possibility. Because it's really... For me, it's basically either Cheeseboro, which might just be because of his name that I'm leaning towards him. Uh, this guy, because I just... I don't know. I see this speed, this gap, and this avoid K, and I'm like, intriguing. Uh, I would be interested in this guy if he could catch better and he wasn't impossible. And then we drop that to 45s. So yeah, I guess since we drop that to 45s that quickly and none of these guys really stand out, like if we sort by power, I mean, this guy's got a ton of swing and miss. He can't really play anywhere defensively. This guy is same sort of profile. Can't play anywhere defensively. This guy is a bit better of a profile, but also can't play anywhere defensively. I mean, Neeland, Blout, and Gilland all have similar profiles. But I think Neeland is better. Like, if you just look at this here, Neeland's got... They've all got very... Or I guess Blatt has better contact and power. Not as good eye. He's not going to strike out as much. But then Neeland has the gap a little bit better defensively. He's also a high schooler, Blout is. Yeah, he's a high schooler. Gilliland is a better I and K's, but I or the same case. So I think I prefer Neeland and Blout are the two I prefer if we're looking at bats here. That's not Hyatt. So it's like Hyatt, Neeland, Blout, or we can take this 70. I think we're going to take the 70 range guy just because. Like, we we need a 70 range guy in the system. And I guess I don't like drafting for need, but... Unless... Is... 55? Yeah, no, he's not like an actual... I don't know. He's a high school guy. So he's a high school guy. He might be here for a couple more rounds. No, I, I just I can't pull the trigger on that bat. I think we're going Neeland. Neeland's our guy here. We're taking him round five. We move things on. These guys are both here. So is Andy Hunt. We're going to take Hunt round six. Move things on. And then Hyatt and Blout are both still here. Our scout thinks we should take... Don Bosco prep guy. I haven't really looked at any... Well, you took ben Spencer Bennett, but yeah, there's... The pitchers, this is the weak pitcher draft. You got a 50 as the best guy here. There wasn't really any pitchers early that, like, stood out to me. So we'll we'll probably take some guys, like, a little bit later on. Just as, like, flyers in the bullpen. But none of these guys are somebody I should be prioritizing over bats right now, I feel like.
So we're definitely going to be looking at, at hitters still. And I think we're just going to take who we like here. Unless our, our scout thinks we should take this guy who is fine, I guess. But I, I still think I prefer one of my guys. Like this guy is decent. I just think Hyatt and Blatt are interesting bats. So I think we're going to take Hyatt, Blout, and then we're here in round nine. And it's just a bunch of 45, so I think we're going to do the rest of this off camera, and then we're going to cut back in. Alrighty, so here we are at the end of the draft. We left things off with uh, Blout, I believe, is round eight. And then in round nine, we took Jaquan Eggerson, who is a corner outfielder with a decent bat profile. Then in round 10, we took Jean-Philippe Galangeau from uh, London, Ontario. Even with a name like that, 6'7", decent corner outfielder, bat profile, pretty good player. Uh, then we took Savion Baptiste, who I thought had an interesting bat profile, definitely a first baseman type because he can't really play second, but uh, he's durable, interesting enough bat. It was a really weak draft class. Let's put it that way. Shortstop, Josh Gannert, not actually a shortstop. He should probably be a left fielder or a first baseman. But he has 70 power potential, so he was worth taking a swing on. And then we took Nate Firestone as a lefty high school reliever in the 13th round. Durable, big stuff, big fastball slider combo. And then we took Costi... Kostiantin Hensley, Rhino, lefty, decent bullpen potential, who knows. Then we took Chad Seifert, another guy, decent enough to have in the organization. Then we took, nope, then we took uh, Alexis Rivas, Rivas right-handed pitcher, decent enough. Then we took Sean Rogers, high adaptability, work ethic, intelligence, 18-year-old. Who knows? Maybe he gets a TCR bump or something. And then we took Stanton Lordy, who is a catcher with really good framing, just to you know help our pitchers throughout the uh, organization. And then Mike Bond, a pitcher who does not really have the greatest ratings. He's 18, though, really good stamina, really good personality, adaptability, work ethic, intelligence. He's durable. Who knows? Maybe he develops really well and gets a bump. Just taking a swing in the 19th round. And then round 20, same sort of thing. Really good personality class. Decent enough ratings. Maybe he turns into something. And then we did indeed offer Spencer Bennett here a bunch of money. We offered him 10.5. I should have shown this, but his thing was like, I'm going to need a bonus significantly more than $9 million to sign. So I was like, here, have 10.5. So who knows? Maybe Spencer Bennett will be a part of this team. Maybe he won't. Uh -huh.